I sure wish I had my home computer here. I have a bunch of bookmarks that I could really use right now for this research project. What you really need is a social bookmarking application. Social bookmarking? What's that? Social bookmarking is a Web 2.0 tool that allows you to share bookmarks between computers and allows you to collaborate on research with a group or even with the entire Internet. That sounds cool. How do I begin with that? First you must decide which service you want to use. My favorite is Digo. Tada! I'm Digo. Wow! Digo, tell me more. Digo is not just a social bookmarking tool. It's great for organizing and analyzing data too. You can highlight text on a web page that stays highlighted when you come back to the page. Add sticky notes, share on Twitter, Facebook or by email and collaborate with others and your network and groups. The best part is that Digo is free. Take a look at this. Welcome to Digo, one of the web's best applications to organize, share, and analyze information. Digo offers a variety of tools from social bookmarking to web annotation and the ability to share and discover. To get started, you will need to point your browser to www.digo.com. That's D I I G O. Before you can begin using Digo, you will first need to create an account. Click on the Get Started Now button to begin. You will start by selecting a username and make sure that it's available. Great, the username is available. So now we'll enter in a name and an email address and a password. And then finally, enter in the CAPTCHA. Oops. You can figure it out. After you hit send, you will need to verify your email address by clicking on an activation link. So I'll go to my email account. And there's my email from Digo. And I'm going to click on the activation link. Now that your account is activated, you can begin using Digo. Digo extensions and add-ins are available for most major browsers. Here Digo is asking me to install the Chrome extension, which I've already installed. As you can see in the extension, you have a variety of options. You can highlight, bookmark, put a sticky note, or share the link. Also, you can always go back to your library just by clicking right here. So begin to using Digo's features, I need to first find a website with information I'd like to save or share. Here's a website on information literacy. Once I open the Digo extension, I can highlight any text on the page and it will ask me if I want to highlight or search. So if I highlight, you can see now it turns yellow. By clicking on this pencil icon, I can change the color of the highlighting. And I can add a sticky note. If I later share this page, Anybody else can come along and add additional posts to the sticky note. Once you've added the sticky note, you might want to press the bookmark key again so that you can add some tags. And you can even add some tags that are not in the recommended list.
Now once we go back to our library and refresh, you'll see the page that we bookmarked and highlighted appears in our list within the library and all of our tags are listed under My Tags. Another way to organize your information is by using a list. You can create a new list by clicking on the Create a List button and giving the list a title. You can make it public or private and assign it to a category. Maybe give it some keywords. Probably not the right category. And if you want, you can give it a description. Wow! I'm loving Digo. Does it work in all of the browsers? Digo has tools that work in most major browsers. A toolbar for the Firefox and Internet Explorer, extensions for Firefox, Safari and Chrome, and bookmarklets for all browsers including iOS and Android. There are even advanced features for premium users, like image capture and cropping tools. Watch this. In Firefox you have even more options. This is the Digo tool in the Firefox toolbar. You can see it gives you quite a few many more options than the one in Chrome. And when we go to bookmark a page, you'll see there's even more options here. Here we can now add to one of our lists. And there's my new list. We can also share to a group, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. We can tweet, we can upload, and we can save it to read later. Digo is going to help me with my project tremendously. How can it help me collaborate better with my research team? Digo allows you to create public or private groups where you can share bookmarks, view each other's highlights and sticky notes, and store notes or image captures. Creating groups is easy. Groups are a place where you can create a community in Digo, where you can collaborate with others. Here we can create a new group by clicking on Create a New Group. Assign your group a name. And put a small description in there. You can select a category for your group whether it's public or private, whether the group will be listed in searches or not, and whether it's free and open to join, whether you have to apply to join, or whether you have to be invited to join, and who can invite new members. So I'm just going to make this a public group. Oh, the group is already taken. And there we are. So now we can invite other people by simply typing in their email addresses and a welcome message. I'm going to skip this step for now. And here is our new group. You can now bookmark pages directly to a group as well. Refresh the page. Now your content is in the group. And your content will also be in your library. And there it is. I'm so happy. Thank you, Digo, for having such great free tools available for me. You're very welcome, sir, indeed. Now you will never have to worry about where your bookmarks are. And best of all now I can share all of my research with my team, immediately. Yes. Go Digo.